how are how are things then? How's the, how are you getting on with your repairs? Uh, the re repairs are going uh, quite well. The, um, the the guys from Doyle's are here, and they've bought some tools and some gear, and uh, they're doing a doing a really good job. Uh, with them last night, they were probably there till about one o'clock in the morning, and starting uh, seven o'clock this morning. So so uh, we're hoping to have them finished pretty soon and get back on track. Just tell tell us what the repairs have actually been, Andy, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, the, as you know, these boats are uh, very difficult to sail and very weight conscious, and you um, you have to build everything uh, you know, very close to the edge. And so there's been uh, there's been a few small failures because of this. That that uh, you know, in, in hindsight, maybe maybe we could have done something about. But but you know, everybody's pushing for those last uh, few grams, and so there's you know small repairs to everything, but but everything adds up to to the big picture, and that's that's been the problem. Yeah, there's just just a few key sails. You know, we obviously had the mainsail problem, which um, you know, we, we, without a mainsail, you can't can't go that far. And uh, you know, so we've, we've you know, obviously uh, no mainsail, no go. And uh, you know, there's a few other little little problems around the place. So we've, you know, we we just can't continue without without a mainsail, basically. And the guys from Doyle have come from New Zealand. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, they've been fantastic in their. Uh, and their support and their problem solving. Um, it's just unfortunate that that, uh, that we are where we are right now. I would imagine the logistics of getting a, a team from uh, New Zealand were not too easy. It's actually easier than uh, <laughs> the UK. Uh, Ross, uh, our shore manager, had to had to uh, find his way onto the RAF flight at the very last minute. Um, these guys were able to take a, a um, civilian flight from New Zealand to to Chile and then Chile to to the Falklands, but uh, they might be spending a little bit of time here afterwards. All oh right, they might be stuck, might they? Yeah, they might be stuck. Uh, and is it true your your sail loft is in the church? Then is it? No, we're actually uh, we've, we've we've used the biggest uh, building on the island, which is the which is the local defence force building. They've given that to us for uh, the next week, so we're not going to need all that time. But it's it's fantastic. We've, it's big enough to spread the spread the mainsail and the code zero out. So uh, you know we couldn't ask for anything more. Just uh, tell us how you guys are feeling then. It's obviously a big disappointment to be stopped, but uh, good to be making progress and knowing that you'll get away soon. Yeah, we're feeling great. I mean, you know, it, it, we've, we've got over the, the fact that we've had to stop. It's, it's a real shame for us, for the for the um, for Alex Thompson Racing and for Hugo Boss that, that we've had to stop. But, you know, we've all got to look forward from that. We've got to take the positives out of it. We'll, we'll get uh, these repairs done and... We'll uh, we'll move on at a hundred percent or as close to it as possible. So, you know, we're looking forward to having a, a great leg back up the Atlantic and and um, you know showing what the boat can really do. And it must have been nice to have been in a dry bed and have some decent food, presumably. <laughs> yeah, the, it, it's been fantastic. The, the the locals have been excellent. The first couple of nights we were billeted with uh, with a local woman who who um, put us up, cooked us some great meals and. You know, it was, it was kind of like being at home. It, it was really nice. You might not want to leave. Uh, a lot of people have arrived here on boats, you know, for a few days, and uh, 30 years later they're still here. So we, we, we'd rather not do that, but it, it's a pretty nice place. Uh, and when, when do you envision leaving then? You were saying uh, in your mail, you were saying tomorrow morning. Is that still a, a possibility? That, that's definitely what we're working towards. Uh, you know, you've got to have a deadline for these things, otherwise otherwise they can all just uh, drag on. So... You know, we're, we're, we're pushing for um, tomorrow morning sometime. How realistic that is, we'll, we'll probably make that call uh, later on this afternoon. And are you particularly wishing to be out before uh, FMC, or is that not really part of the uh, the uh, schedule, as it were? No, absolutely. We've still got a race on. Um, still got 6,000 miles to go. And, you know, there's a boat that we'd, we'd put a long way behind us that's, that's now back in the picture. So, you know, there's, a, there's still a lot to play for. You know, we've still got a beat them and we still got to make up some miles on the guys in front so just uh, we're just asking actually if you managed to see any of the rugby or have you been too busy I, I just had a replay of the rugby on in my room now and it was a great match and uh, I, I thought England uh, were going to play a little better than they did but full credit to the Irish you know they've, they've uh, had, had a bad year so far and um, and last year as well so yeah, they pulled out a great performance well it'd be nice to be back to real life for you for a few days, but do you think it's going to be difficult to get back into the race, into uh, into race mode, into the rhythm? There'll always be that transition, but we've spent so long on the boat together now, and we've we've uh, you know a few days on land, and I don't think it'll be too hard. I think you know the first first day of uh, 
he's you know, getting all the toxins out of your system and getting back into a sleep pattern. Um, that'll be hard, but I think after that we'll, we'll be pretty good. And how's your relationship with uh, with Vuter? What, what do you talk about when you get uh, the, the, the kind of uh, down moments or the moments when you're not working uh, flat out? Is, has he talked any more about uh, racing solo? Has this put him off perhaps, or has this increased his appetite for uh, this kind of racing? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we, we talk a, a lot about how physically hard it is, but, but we talk a lot about uh, things outside the boat, you know, family, friends, you know, old old war stories, um, you know, the, the, the past, the future. It's, you know, it's pretty general conversation and really just, just whatever pops up. Uh, that's such an important part of the, the kind of cement or the glue that holds your relationship together, isn't it? Uh, and and some, some teams don't necessarily have that, even though you only came together relatively late. Yeah, but Vout has done a, an amazing job. I, I keep telling myself this all the time. You know, he jumped on the boat for, for 10 days, and here we are, uh, you know, 70, 80 days later. Uh, you know, so there's... there's um, you know, we're, we're both stubborn characters. We're both, uh, you know, we're both very determined. Um, but, but we have a good, uh, good way of working through our problem solving, and you know, we've got a common history. So, you know, there's there's, there's a lot of positives, and you know, we definitely wouldn't have got that far without without a lot of those positives.